Hello and welcome back to another track guide. This time we head down to the Principality of Monaco. This staple of the Formula 1 calendar has hosted Grand Prix since long before the series became the Formula 1 World Championship, and because of its nature as a street circuit, there's not been many updates over the years. That results in a tight, twisty, technical track punishing even the smallest mistakes. Unfortunately, we're not all as quick as a pro driver, but no stress, help is at hand. Track Titan can not only show your session insights right down to your throttle and brake traces, but can also provide personalised tips based on your individual performance. Additionally, as you start to get more accustomed to the platform, you can toggle on Advanced Mode, which allows you to view the data the way professional drivers would do in real life. By signing up to Track Titan with the code MONACO, you can get 30 days of unlimited data insights for free. No card details needed, just record some laps and analyse your session to help you get quicker, faster. If track guides and general sim racing content is what you like to see, don't forget to hit the subscribe button to keep up to date with our newest videos including F124 guides coming soon. Now let's jump into the track guide. With such a tight track, Monaco is all about keeping your minimum speed up through corners. So have a high rate setting on your aero and we can't stress enough how much gears play a pivotal role around this track so make sure you're using manual gears as well. Into turn 1, break around the 60 meter mark, shortly before the 50 meter brake board. You'll want to get uncomfortably close to the barrier, change down to 4th gear initially, trail brake to the apex and change down again shortly before the inside kerb to help rotate the car towards the apex and peak the res for the corner exit. Slightly modulate the throttle from the apex and use the whole track width to maximise your exit speed. This small kink is turn 2 so keep a smooth line and go to the very outside right before turning in. When you reach the second pedestrian crossing at the top of the hill, begin turning in, change down to 4th gear and dab around 40% brake pressure. Keep a small bit of brake pressure on to help the car turn into the apex and modulate the throttle out of the corner taking care not to run wide on exit. As turn 4 is a sharp right hander, you won't want to go to full throttle. Instead, take the throttle to 70% and stick to the left hand barrier. Lift off the throttle where the wide advertising banner starts and use around 15% brake pressure to put the weight over the front axle to rotate the car into the corner. You should start accelerating slightly before the apex to get a good run down the hill. Due to having a low ride height, you'll want to avoid going straight down the dip, so slightly turn away from the barrier and go around it before coming back to the outside ahead of turn 5. This is not as important as in real life, but still worth bearing in mind. Turn 5 is a difficult corner, as with a downhill approach, it is extremely easy to overload the tyres, lock up and end up in the wall. So look for this white patch in the barrier as your brake marker. Trail brake to the apex and change down to third gear. Then just as you reach the corner, change down to second gear to shift weight and help the car turn into the corner and heavily modulate the throttle on exit. Into the tricky turn 6 hairpin, brake as you go past the start of the brick wall on the right hand side. Hug the outside barrier, change down to second gear, slightly trail brake and you can take the inside kerb but it may unsettle your car depending on your setup. It won't gain much time so avoid the inside kerb if you want to play it safe. Modulate the throttle and exit and get back over to the left hand side ahead of turn 7. Use a small bit of brake, touch the kerb slightly and modulate the throttle out. Into turn 8, start braking at the red part of the barrier with a small 40% dab and coast to the apex. It's easy to spin the tyres on corner exit here so gradually apply the throttle until you can get to 100% without losing traction. Keep a tight line through the corner and move the car to the right barrier late so you can brake in a straight line ahead of turn 10. This is a very tricky corner to get right as many drivers brake too early or too late and either hit the barrier or cut the corner so start braking around the 100 meter board. Change down to third gear and trail brake right through turn 10 until the first apex of turn 11. Try to straighten the line between these two as much as possible. Use all of the kerb and modulate the throttle throughout until the corner exit. Into turn 12, start turning in at the 50 meter board. Change down to 5th gear, lift off the throttle to around 25% and add a bit of brake pressure too which will just help prevent understeer. Turn 13 and 14 are easily flat so keep your steering smooth, use as much kerb as you want and just straighten the run as much as you can. The braking point for the turns 15 and 16 chicane is tricky so spot this bush on the left and brake there. You only need a quick but sharp blip on the brake and slightly trail brake to the apex of turn 15. Like the previous corners, 
try straighten the run between the two apexes. Take care on the throttle as you take the turn 16 apex curb to avoid a sudden weight transfer. Into turns 17 and 18, the braking is tricky as it's on a corner, and many people lock up here or err on the side of caution and brake too early. To solve this, stay at the outside barrier and then with a very slight steering input, brake almost in a straight line and trail brake to the apex to help the front turn in and avoid understeering. Your line through here will be more of a V-shape as you take a shallow line through and then turn sharply towards the final corner. Into turn 19, start braking shortly after the red barrier and turning quickly afterwards. You'll only need to dab a brake here, so for the most part, coast to the apex and modulate the throttle out of the corner, taking care to avoid using too much curb on the left-hand side, and then you can power out to finish the lap. Now, as we've mentioned, this is a very difficult track to get right and there are many instances of drivers making mistakes. So, using Track Titan, you can see every mistake you're making, but additionally, you're also given tips on how you can improve. If you're an F1 fan, which if you're watching this video, then it's probable, then you can also analyze your favorite driver's data from real life F1 sessions. All session data from every driver at every race of the F1 2024 season is available to delve into. Don't forget to sign up with the code MONACO for 30 days of unlimited free data insights. Now let's put everything together into a hot lap driven by a professional esports driver. The lap time is a 108.491. Don't forget that you can get 30 days of unlimited data insights for free when you sign up to track title with the code MONACO. So with free data insights and all the details of mastering the circuit now laid out for you, we hope to see your name on the track title leaderboard soon. But that's it from us today, thank you very much for watching, see you again in the next video, drive safe and race with respect.